Hey, Mike from Prepros here. I've been a full-time SAT and ACT tutor for the past eight years, and I just went in and took the March 2023 SAT. And I'm happy to report that I was able to go in and get a perfect 1600. I also was able to do this without missing a single question across any of the sections of the test. And equally as exciting for me, many of my students, both that I work with one-on-one -on -one and in my online course, absolutely crushed the test, including this one girl who went in and got a 1570. Now, in the rest of this video, we're going to break it down into two parts to help you out. The first is going to be my overall thoughts of the March 2023 SAT. And the second part is going to be what I actually did to prepare the week of the test to put myself in position to get this perfect score. Now, the March SAT itself was quite standard. And this is not surprising since it is a standardized test after all. So we see the exact same patterns, the exact same question types, and the exact same concepts, SAT to SAT. We did get one surprising twist in the math section, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, the reading test itself was very, very standard. We had one tricky passage here, but besides that, I could see that the SAT was up to their exact same tricks that they're up to every single SAT. So I was taking the test. I could spot all of these types of answers that I knew, unfortunately, many students would be falling for because they were half right. They were written to look attractive. They were things that made sense, but couldn't be defended by the passage. So I was taking the test. I was doing all the things that I teach my students to do, breaking down the questions really effectively, eliminating answer choices as soon as one word is incorrect, being able to bracket off where I should be looking for lines, being able to identify the easy versus hard questions, and doing the questions in the most effective order so I could set myself up for success as well as possible. Now, the writing and language section was also really, really consistent with what we see SAT to SAT. And every single writing and language test is pretty much the exact same. We saw all the exact same grammar rules. There were all the exact same patterns. And this really let me, as I was going through the section, take advantage of the fact that I could recognize what concept was being tested based on the patterns of the answer choices and apply the rules that I know to be able to understand exactly why one answer choice is right and the other three are wrong. If you're struggling on writing in language, you simply need to spend the time learning the grammar rules. If you do that and you understand how to approach the other questions, this is a relatively easy section to drastically increase your score. All right, now on to the math part of the test. Now, SAT math for me is really, really easy. I've written an SAT math book, which I think is the best out there by far. I've put together an advanced math course, which has helped many of my students score perfectly on the section. So as I was going through the test, the only thing I was being really careful of is not falling for any of those classic SAT traps, not slightly misreading a question, not stopping one step before you get to your answer. As long as I was doing that stuff, I knew there was nothing that was going to stop me from getting perfect on the math part of the test here. Now, there was one question that was a little bit different from stuff we typically see on the SAT. And this was the question testing you on vertical and horizontal asymptotes. But the rest of the SAT was a lot of repeated concepts. These were questions that I have seen identical versions to on earlier SATs or were teeny tiny twists of questions that we've seen appear over the last few years. Now to the part of the video you're probably most interested in. What did I do to prep myself heading into the test? Now, starting 10 days out for eight of the 10 mornings, I sat down and I took an official old college board practice test. I would wake up early the exact same way I had to do on test day. I took it at the exact same time it was going to take the real SAT. And I gave myself the exact same time requirements. And I made sure to use a Scantron sheet so that as I was going through test to test, I had to bubble in all of the answers because that bubbling in can take a little bit of time up. Now, the really important thing I was doing after every single test is I was meticulously tracking my mistakes and then reviewing them before I went to the next test. So as you can see here, I used a Google Sheet for a really simple mistake tracker. For each section of the test, I created a separate tab. And for each test, I would label the questions I missed or the questions I felt a little bit iffy on. And I wrote out the reason why I missed the question or what I need to do next time to make sure I get it right. And before I took the next practice test, I would have to go back through and revisit every single question that I missed from the prior practice tests. Now, for me, I understand the SAT at a really high level. I know all of the math content. I understand exactly what they're doing for right versus wrong answers on the reading section. I know all the grammar rules. So what I was focusing on was making sure I started to discover the pattern of where I might make some silly mistakes on test day. 
And so as I went through more and more practice tests, I started making fewer and fewer of those mistakes and I was able to catch myself from making those mistakes. And the last four practice tests I took, I didn't miss a single question across all four of those SATs. And I consistently was having these light bulb moments of noticing this was the type of question I missed before. This is the exact same pattern I have to watch out for. And this translated to test day. There were multiple times on the test where I caught myself knowing, Michael, you need to reread this type of question a second time because this is a place you may make a mistake. Or here you need to be extra careful for this type of special inference question on the reading section so that you go back and you really can justify your answer based off the text that you're seeing. And by doing that, it made a world of difference. And if you're looking to score 1550 plus, tracking your mistakes is absolutely essential, not only as you're taking practice tests, but also as you're learning materials. Now, that's the part of my process which is going to be really helpful for the majority of you. If you are not already scoring 1550 plus on the SAT, which if you've done, you most likely don't need to take the SAT again, you should not be just taking tons and tons of practice tests like this. Instead, what you should be doing is you should take a practice test, you should track your mistakes very similarly to what I did, but you also need to go back through and address content that you're struggling with. And this is why I created these diagnostic sheets, which are totally free to use for all of the published College Board tests, is this lets you take a test, see what type of content you're struggling with, and then go and learn the content so you can fill in your gaps. If you do not already understand the content and the math concepts and the tips and tricks at a really high level like I do, simply going through tons and tons of tests is not going to be beneficial for you. So I hope this video really helped you out. Just to reiterate, the really important part is learning from your mistakes. That's the whole secret to success on the SAT, but you need to avoid the trap that most students fall into. And that's that they just take tests, take tests, take tests, take tests. You need to spend time learning the content that is tested on the SAT, because although the exact same type of questions repeat over and over, if you do not understand the core concept being tested, when the SAT changes up the variation a little bit, you're gonna be stumped on test day.